Hello and welcome to Small Seeds. In this video, I would like to talk to you about a very helpful and common little plant that is also one of my absolute favorite wild medicinal herbs, Prunella vulgaris. It is most commonly known as self-heal or heal all, and it goes by some other common names as well, such as blue curls, carpenter's plant, wound wart, heart of the earth, all heal, and a few others. During the summer months, this field is so abundant with this special little plant, and I am so happy to have the opportunity to be able to harvest it from here and enjoy the self-healing experience of self-heal. So let's get into everything about self-heal. I would like to start off with how to identify it, then get into edibility, traditional uses, and some of the studies that have been done with this plant and then some ways that I like to craft it into remedies. The plant was originally considered native to Europe and Asia, but it was discovered that there is a species that is native to North America. Today, this species is still classified under the species of Prunella vulgaris as the subspecies Prunella lanceolata. So depending on where you are, your self-heal plants may look slightly different from the ones in this video. However, I have done my very best to have a generalized identification, so it should be helpful for all of the variations of self-heal. Self-heal is a member of the mint family, so it has a squared stem. Growing at the top of each stem is a flower spike that contains multiple flowers. The flower spikes are green and often tinged with a brown or reddish color and contain small hairs all over it. The flowers of self-heal range from a deep purple color to a lighter lavender color. The flowers are tubular and two-lipped. The upper lip is more purple in color and it forms a hood over the lower lip. The lower lip is usually lighter in color than the upper lip and sometimes almost white. The lower lip contains two lateral lobes and is fringed around the bottom of the middle lobe. The flowers have no noticeable floral scent to them. The leaves grow in opposite pairs and they can be oval or lance-shaped with slightly toothed edges. The stem also sometimes has this reddish or brown color, and both the leaves and stems are slightly hairy. This small herbaceous perennial plant usually grows no more than a foot off the ground and can be found growing on the edges of forests, along waterways, on lawns, and in open fields like the one I harvest from. So before we get into the edibility and medicinal properties, I just wanted to mention that self-heal is pollinated by bumblebees and other pollinators. So if you do harvest it from a wild area, make sure to save some for the bees! Self-heal's leaves and flower buds can be eaten raw or cooked, or dried out for later use as an herbal tea. I highly suggest rinsing them off, adding them into salads, smoothies, juicing them, or just infusing them into water for a highly beneficial herbal tea. Just, you know, try to actually get the water in the container you are using, unlike me. Self-heal has been used for centuries as a medicinal plant for a wide range of wounds and ailments. In traditional Chinese medicine, it is considered a cooling herb, so it has been used to take heat out of the liver for eye inflammation, fevers, kidney ailments, and for swellings of the thyroid, breasts, and neck. In Europe, it was considered one of the best herbs for wound healing, both internally and externally. The 17th century herbalist and physician, Nicholas Culpepper wrote in his book, The Complete Herbal, Self-Heal, whereby when you are hurt, you may heal yourself. It is a special herb for inward and outward wounds. It was used to heal ulcers in the mouth, throat, and stomach, for sore throats and swollen tonsils, and it was used topically to heal all types of wounds, sores, stings, burns, and so on. Its name Prunella is said to come from Brunella, a word derived from the German word for Quincy, which is an ailment that involved an extremely inflamed and sore throat with abscesses in the tonsils. Some other traditional uses for this plant were to ease headaches, as a diuretic to increase urine flow, as a mild expectorant to get excess mucus out of the lungs, and to treat different types of respiratory and digestive ailments. This plant was also used medicinally by many indigenous tribes of North America. 
The Cherokee ate this plant as a green and used it as a wash for burns, cuts, and other skin irritations. The Iroquois used this plant for all types of ailments, including respiratory conditions, fevers, back aches, digestive issues, and as a blood purifier. There are many other tribes that used self-heal for different purposes, so I will put a link in the description of a list I found of different tribes and what they used it for. Today, some of the main uses in herbalism are for inward and outward wound healing and inflammation, to support healthy lymphatic function, to relieve symptoms of allergies, for cold sores, inflammatory bowel conditions, and as an immunomodulator. Since this little plant is one of the more widely studied wild medicinal herbs, it is often used today in herbal medicine to help with some of the ailments that it has been studied with. As much as I would like to just sum up the herbal actions of this plant in a long list saying that it's antimicrobial, anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, antiviral, anti-cancer, immunomodulatory, astringent, demulcent, emollient, and so on, <sighs> I want to dive a bit deeper into it. It is important to note that most of these studies were sadly done on mice or rats, and some in vitro studies were done with human cells, but human trials do need to be done before fully understanding the medicinal actions of this plant. Lastly, I would like to mention that these studies were done using common self-heal, the subspecies of Prunella vulgaris native to Europe and Asia. So depending on which subspecies and where it is growing, there may be different levels of the plant's active medicinal constituents. Just something to keep in mind. Am I overthinking this? Probably. All right. Prunella vulgaris has great skin care qualities as an anti-inflammatory and antioxidant. It was found that it may offer protection to the skin against oxidative stress caused by UVA and UVB radiation from the sun, which means it may prevent damage to the skin caused by the sun and also have some anti-aging activity as well. It may also be somewhat protective against damage done by blue light on the eyes. It was effective in reducing symptoms of gingivitis, has anti-allergy activity, and has also been shown to have antibacterial and antifungal activity. Prunella vulgaris extracts showed to inhibit the binding ability of the herpes simplex virus, and in other studies showed some anti-HIV activity. Other studies done with Prunella vulgaris showed that it may help to lower blood sugar and cholesterol levels. Selfiel extracts even improved heart function within diabetic mice, and an extract administered to human heart cells inhibited certain inflammation-causing proteins that lead to heart disease. So self-heal may also be protective against hardening of the arteries. Self-heal may also have anti-cancer activity. A human study done on 424 breast cancer patients showed that the patients who took self-heal along with their cancer treatment lived significantly longer, and this group had more people who showed no sign of disease after treatment. The Prunella vulgaris extracts also helped to reduce the side effects of chemotherapy. Another study done on human liver cancer cells showed self-heal stopped the spread of the cancer. And other studies done with self-heal showed it has potential to become an anti-lymphoma drug, a possible preventative for lung cancer, and it also showed anti-uterine tumor activity. I also think it's worth mentioning some of the active constituents within Prunella vulgaris, many of which may be responsible for its healing abilities, including tannins, rosmarinic acid, caffeic acid, oleanolic acid, ursulic acid, betulinic acid, polysaccharides, and flavonoids. Of course, there are many other constituents within this plant that may also be responsible for its healing properties, but these are the ones mentioned most in the studies and the ones that I could find the most information on. There are no known side effects, however, it does have a diuretic effect, which is something to be aware of, especially if you are taking blood thinners. I like to drink a self-heal infusion fresh when the plant is flowering, and I also harvest a good amount to be dried out and added to herbal tea blends when it is not in season. I also like to tincture self-heal and infuse it into oils, which I use topically on its own, and I also add it into salves for minor wounds, burns, bug bites, rashes, and really just overall skincare. And I like to add it into an herbal cough and cold syrup that I make in the fall and winter. If you couldn't already tell, I truly adore this plant. 
its humble yet beautiful presence and long list of benefits makes for a truly awe-inspiring medicinal herb. I hope you found this video informative and I hope you are inspired to look into this plant for yourself. Thank you so much for watching and I hope that you can find some self-healing in your life, even if it doesn't involve this sweet little plant.